In this video, we're just going to do some practice involving permutations and combinations, and I also want to introduce to you the concept of combinatorial proof because it's something you will use throughout the rest of this course. Let's start with a few practice. So how many different words can be formed using the letters in adamant that have no consecutive A's? So again, this is a little bit of a tricky question. Again, because we have three A's. We don't know how to deal with that yet, so let's talk about how we might structure this. If I have the other letters, the non-A letters, I have D, M, N, and T. So those are all distinct letters. So really I have four positions of letters. Now I also have one, two, three, four, five positions where I could put the A's. Now, the reason that's important is because it says no consecutive A's. So I can't have two A's between D and M or two A's between M and N or all three A's together. We need them to be separated by some other letter in our word. So if we're talking about the A's, the placement of the A's is that I have five different places I can put the A's and I'm going to choose three of them because I only have three A's. For the other part of the question, we have four non-A's and they can be in any order that we want. So that's just a permutation. So this, there's four letters I could put here, three here, two here, whatever is left here. So times four factorial. Now, what you're going to find quite often is that you're going to be able to leave your solution just like this. So I know a lot of us like to go ahead and multiply that out to get the correct solution, but often you're going to have solutions that are a little bit trickier and therefore you're maybe not going to want to um, multiply everything out. Plus there's less room for error that way. So this is a perfectly acceptable answer. Five choose three times four factorial. Let's look at the second question. If a coin is flipped eight times, how many possibilities contain at least three heads? So again, you have to be really careful when you get something like at least, because that um, implies that there are a lot of different possibilities. So at least three heads means three heads, or four heads, or five, or six, or seven, or eight. So let's talk about how we can structure this one. The coin is flipped eight times, so I'm going to have eight choose three heads plus eight choose four heads plus eight choose five heads plus eight choose six heads plus eight choose seven plus eight choose eight. Now again, these are combinations because it doesn't matter the order in which we get this five or six or seven heads. It just matters that out of the eight times that five or six or seven or three or four or however many are heads. So this is one way to do it. And again, I can certainly multiply that out to find the solution. I think if I remember correctly, the solution is 219. Now, the other way to do this is, of course, to look at the opposite problem that says, let's find out how many total outcomes there are, which of course would be two to the eighth. So two to the eighth, because there are eight options, or I'm sorry, there are eight trials, and each trial has two options heads or tails. We're talking about a regular coin here. And then I could subtract, instead of adding three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whenever you're looking at at least, I could say, okay, what about eight choose zero and eight choose one and eight choose two. So maybe a little bit um, less work for that. So again, you can use your calculator to find eight choose zero and eight choose one and eight choose two. And this ends up as 256. And there's just one way to choose zero things. And there are eight ways, obviously, to choose one. And there are 28 ways to choose two. So 256 minus all of that gives me 219, which is, again, the correct solution. So if you'll notice, 
We get the same solution either way, and both of them are perfectly acceptable ways to find the answer. Here's another example. This one's much more straightforward, but uh, on purpose. So how many different poker hands are possible using a standard deck of 52 cards? So for those of you who don't play poker, you're going to get five cards in a hand of poker. And of course, you're trying to get, you know, the best combination of those five cards. So if I'm just looking for the number of hands possible, that's going to be 52 choose five, which as we know is 52 factorial, five factorial, 47 factorial, which is 52 minus five. Pretty straightforward. The second question is obviously related to the first. It says, how many ways can I choose 47 of the 52 cards in a standard deck of cards? Well, that would be, whoops, 52, let me try again, 52 choose 47, which would be 52 factorial, 47 factorial, 52 minus 47 factorial, which is five factorial. Now, as we can see, these two are exactly the same. So we're saying that n choose k is the same as n choose n minus k. This is called an identity. So it's just an identity because it, we can obviously show it very simply using algebra, which we've done here. And we could do the same using n and k. So n choose k would be n factorial over k factorial and minus k factorial. And then the other side would be n factorial and minus k factorial and then n minus n minus k factorial. And of course, this would turn into K factorial. So we can see very clearly algebraically that these are the same. So what I want to do now is take a look at a combinatorial proof. So what exactly is a combinatorial proof? Well, it's not like a normal mathematical proof. It is essentially proving that both sides of an identity count the same objects in a different way. So we were just looking at the fact that 52 choose five was the same solution as 52 choose 47. So we showed that mathematically. How could we talk about this combinatorially? Well, we could say on the left side of the equation, we are counting the five cards that we are choosing for our hand of poker. How is that going to be the same as 52 choose 47? Well, on the right side, we're choosing the 47 cards that we are not given in the hand of poker. So we can see that those two things would be the same because there are only 52 cards. They cannot be used more than once. So it would make sense that 52 choose five, being we're choosing the five, hands, five cards in our hand of poker would be equivalent to choosing 47 cards that we are not given in our hand of poker. That's certainly not the last that you'll see of combinatorial proof, but that's a good introduction. Uh, so we'll look at another one in our next section. For now, let's finish up with just one last example that has three parts. So if you're up for it, press pause, try all three parts of this question, then press play to see how you did. So we have 13 people on a softball team that are showing up for a game. How many ways are there to choose 10 players to take the field? So the question in your head should be, does order matter or not matter? So in this case, we're just choosing 10 players. We're not choosing them for a specific position or a specific batting order. We're just choosing the 10 players to take the field. So there are 13 people and I'm choosing 10 of them. So it's 13 choose 10. So I can leave my solution just like that or I can use my calculator to evaluate 286. For part B, how many ways are there to assign the 10 positions by selecting players from the 13 people who show up? So this is now no longer a combination. We're actually assigning the positions. So this is going to be a permutation of 13 comma 10. So this is going to be 13 factorial over 
13 minus 10 or 3 factorial. That is going to give me a much larger number. So 1 billion 37 million 836 thousand 800 different ways to assign the positions. Again, leaving your solution just like this is perfectly acceptable. For the last one, of the 13 people who show up, three are women. How many ways are there to choose 10 players to take the field if at least one of these players must be a woman? So this is an example of a question where you could go about this in a very confusing, complicated way to determine all of the different ways that something could happen, or we can try to find the easier approach. So in this case, we know there are 286 total ways using all 13 people. Now, how many ways are there to choose all men? Well, there's 10 men because there are three women. There are obviously 10 men. So there's only one way to choose all men. So again, we're looking at combinations. So essentially we're saying 13 choose 10 minus 10 choose 10, which means 286 minus one, which is 285 would be your final solution. Again, we're just taking all of the possible combinations and taking away the one way in which we choose all 10 men. Up next, we're going to take a look at the binomial theorem.